Welcome back. We are jumping right in where we left off last time. We are in the middle of Habakkuk's first prayer. So I'm going to start reading in Habakkuk uh, chapter 1, verse 1, the very beginning of the book, and we'll get the entire first prayer again. The Bible says, The burden which Habakkuk the prophet did see, O Lord, how long shall I cry, and thou wilt not hear? Even cry out unto thee of violence, and thou wilt not save. Why dost thou show me iniquity, and cause me to behold grievance? For spoiling and violence are before me, and there are that raise up strife and contention. Therefore the law is slacked, and judgment doth never go forth. For the wicked doth compass about the righteous. Therefore wrong judgment proceedeth. And so we gave a name to this prayer. This is the first of three prayers in the book of Habakkuk. The name for this one that we're going to refer to it as is the prayer of inquisition. It sounds sounds a bit harsh. Sounds like he's almost rebuking the Lord. But we looked at last time, he was praying according to scripture. So he's he's acknowledging that his nation has departed from the Lord and and a lot of the wickedness that's that was going on, but he decided he was going to tell the truth, and so he he's asking God, why was this being allowed to happen? So I want us to look at verse four specifically today, as as we get started, and I want us to look exactly at what this verse is saying. There's so much in this last verse of this prayer that he has. He says, therefore, now therefore it means as a result of everything that, that came before. So everything he mentioned in the previous couple of verses, this burden that he has, talking about crying out to God, he had beheld violence. He, he said, you will not save. He says, you're showing me iniquity and I've seen grievance and there's spoiling, there's violence. He mentions that again. There's strife, contention, all this corruption that he had seen that led him to believe that God should pour out judgment on his people. He says, because of all of that, the law is slacked. Now, law is referring to the word of God as a whole. So really what we're going to find in verse 4 is the whole verse is an indictment on the spiritual leadership. So he's basically saying the spiritual leaders of Israel, they've, they've dropped the ball. They've failed. So he says, therefore, as a result of all this corruption, the law is slacked. So there's four things that I, that I really find in verse 4 that he's saying, you know, what has happened? He's looking at his nation and he's saying, what, what happened in our, in our nation to bring us to this point? The first thing is there was a loosening of righteousness. He says the law is slacked. In, in other words, he's saying... Um, things have grown lax. Um, we've loosened up. No one's doing what's right. And I just want to warn, because I feel as Habakkuk was doing at this time, I feel an obligation. Preachers today should be warning. We should be encouraging other believers to be growing tighter, if you would, in righteousness. As there were so few kings in, in the nation of Israel at that time, who actually did this. There were so few leaders in, in the kingdom of Israel or in the temple who actually tightened up in areas of righteousness, who actually cut down the high places, who actually um, got rid of the idols and the idolatry. And I, I just want to, I don't know, I, I just want to warn that that there should be a, there should be a growing closer to the Lord that causes us to be more restricted. It, it should, we should never criticize people for having higher standards. I've seen that in youth groups. I've seen it in churches, and it's not right. Preachers, as preachers, we must be cautious. Never criticize someone for having higher standards, and, and that's what that's what he said. He says that there's been a loosening of righteousness. And my prayer for us today is that we would be growing, that we would be growing tighter, that we would be having higher standards, that our righteousness, that we would be drawing closer to the Lord, being more conformed into the image of Christ. 
He said, that's not happening today. He also said, um, judgment doth never go forth. In other words, there was a lessening, if that's, if that's a word, I'm not sure. There was a lessening of truth. Truth was diminished. He said, the judgment, it never goes forth. You don't hear people talking about what's right anymore. And then he says, for the wicked doth compass about the righteous. Now, the word compass, basically, he's saying there was, um, we're being surrounded by the wicked. We're being overtaken. So this is the third thing. He says the righteous are losing. So the first thing he says, there's a loosening of righteousness. Okay, we're growing more lax instead of growing uh, more holy. Then he says, number two, there's a lessening of truth. Then third, he says, righteousness is losing. Literally, he says, the wicked are surrounding us. They're overtaking us. They're beating us. And to this, all right, I want you to remember this, this phrase where he says, for the wicked doth compass about the righteous. Because we're going to come back to this. God actually gives him a specific answer um, later on in the book to this, um, this concern that he has. Um, so just wait for it, okay? We'll get there at some point over this summer. But remember where he says, we're being compassed about by the wicked. Because God, it's actually at the very end of the book, if I remember. But God gives him a great answer to this. And it's, it gets me excited. So I, I'm going to move on. But so he says, there's been a loosening of righteousness. There's been a lessening of truth. The righteous are losing. And then finally, he says, there's a total and absolute lack of truth. He says, therefore, wrong judgment proceedeth. The word wrong, it, it can also be translated rested or um, it's, it's been taken. So he's almost, he's almost saying judgment has been taken. It's been uh, kidnapped. Truth, he's saying truth has been stolen away from us. And all that proceeds out is just this counterfeit truth. In other words, he's like, there, there is no truth that's being proclaimed today. There's a total lack of truth. So what happened to this nation? Well, they basically became deprived of God's truth. So they, they stopped hearing the truth. They stopped learning the truth. And then secondly, they stopped speaking the truth in love. So how do we keep this from happening in our own lives? I'm talking personally right now, looking inwardly at our own hearts. How do we avoid what happened, this indictment on the spiritual leadership for the whole country. Well, we have, to, we, we have to never get to the point where we're deprived of God's truth. And we have to not stop speaking the truth in love. Ephesians talks about this. It says, um, where I'm actually going to flip over there. He says, um, it's around the same place where he says, For you have not so learned Christ. This is Ephesians chapter 4. Um, He says in verse 15, he says, But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. So let that be a challenge for us today. Hearing the truth, we have to know the truth before we can speak it. And as you look back at the history of Israel, the sin that they fell into, all sin starts with believing a lie. So they, they just stopped believing the truth about God. They stopped following his commandments. They stopped obeying. When you, when you stop believing God, then you stop obeying God. And then you stop following God. And then you're not living godly. So if we want to continue living godly, then that means we have to be following God. Which means we have to be obeying God. Which means we have to be believing God. Which means we have to know God. So what about us? Well, I want you to know, first of all, this prayer that we're looking at, you can go to God. You might seem isolated in your assessment of the situation around you. It might seem like there's not many people around you that care for spiritual things. And if that's the case, you can call out to God. But no matter what you do, keep sharing the truth. So I pray that you'd be encouraged and challenged as you walk with your Savior this week.